Today's episode has been sponsored by our go-to music licensing platform, Musicbed. And uh, you guys have been really, really uh, appreciating the music that we've been using throughout the Ladakh series. Uh, so stick around till the end because we're going to dive a little deeper into our whole process of music selection. Uh, so without further ado, I fell in love immediately the moment I drove in. Marvelous, man. It's just stunning. No, you get those Puktal vibes over here. That's really cool. Like Discovery Channel shit. Like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Namaste, Ji. How's everybody doing today? So we are on our last leg of our journey in Ladakh, and uh, basically we are exploring the areas between Leh and Kargil, uh, parts of Sham Valley and parts of uh, Kargil district as well. Uh, but at the moment, I am in this beautiful village, just 40 kilometers from Leh, called Saspul. And uh, as you can see behind me, there's some really cool looking caves. We also have a friend of ours, Tashi, with us, who's going to explain us what's going on and he's coming along with us on this trip. So, really excited. Oh, this looks like the entrance to these caves. They look pretty old, yeah? Yeah. Can you see how fine the lines are in each drawing? Like, it's this much each figure, and yet, like everything from like wrinkles in the neck and fingers and all, like the detail with which things have been drawn and the finesse of the brush strokes is just like marvelous, man. It's just stunning. Wow, that one looks so stunning. I can't believe. Uh, thousand plus year old site is completely unguarded but I guess that's the beauty of it. Come let's go check the other one out. Oh watch your step. Yes. yes. Oh this is all nice. Yeah. These are quite different no? Yeah very different. Oh, I'm just happy being in caves because I love caves. <laughs> So now we are quickly walking up to the remains of the Saspul Fort. I guess that's what it's called. This is awesome. So this is what we've been doing. Actually, since Goa, we've, we've been trying to do this. We carry like a 10 liter water can with us and we don't buy mineral water bottle anywhere. Unless we like really have to have to. Yeah, we try. But oh, it's fun, it's so hot. <laughs> cool me down like fully. Man, these roads are so freaking amazing. Ladakhi people are really, really blessed to have smooth tarmac <laughs> everywhere and anywhere they <laughs> go. Anyway, we are now in this area known as the Lower Sham Valley and we are headed to this village called Skurpachin, which is where Tashi is actually from. And he's going to be showing us around the local sights and sounds and very excited to be exploring these new areas of Ladakh. Okay, so we are making a small little pit stop at this village called Dumkar. There's like a whole area with a ton of rock art. And they call it the rock art uh, sanctuary. And uh, yeah, ancient rock carvings. What's Known as me? petroglyphs. Known as petroglyphs. I just learned that. <laughs> Based on what we've read over here, it says that this artwork was probably done more than 2,000 years ago uh, by the people who lived in the by the nomadic people who lived in Central Asia in the steppes of Central Asia. It's pretty interesting. There's a father and child over there. Lot of ibexes. I think that's a bull. So cool. 
these are possibly like hundreds of thousands of years old man i can't believe it that's amazing that's really cool like discovery channel shit like <laughs> heading to the monastery tashi thought uh, it would be nice to make a quick pit stop this day has been of pit full of pit stops but yeah <laughs> a quick pit stop at the skurbachin uh, palace so this was not really a palace meant for a king but uh, maybe for one of his uh, immediate subordinates so let's go check it out welcome madam <laughs> feel so special keys and all you got <laughs> So I'm not 100% sure but uh, as far as I've heard uh, there are four uh, such statues in Ladakh which is facing in all four directions so one is okay. facing north south east west okay so one more is there in the monastery which we'll see later all right i was happily chit chatting and then i suddenly entered this chamber and my jaw just dropped open looking at this beautiful statue and all these like really really stunning paintings all around and uh, the smaller ones as well, especially because they're so old like you can actually feel the age in all these artifacts over here they have this herbs you know uh. so they burned it and then with that ash there was this grayish blue that used to produce like more over like this you know so they used to use that and you you'll see those more you know and this this were the very prominent blue that people could not afford you know this kind of this is still very lively right Yeah. Okay guys, so we are now in the big huge monastery uh in Skirbachin. Uh you know, perch really inside these rocks, you know. Uh to some extent, you know, you get those Pukhtal vibes over here like the one in Zanskar. Ah, uh, but man, this monastery is so freaking amazing. Just, you know, mazes, labyrinths, walking and uh, the main temple where we were earlier oh my god it's like built into a rock like a cave inside and the moment you walk inside it's like an ac inside you know and it's really hot like right now in ladakh it's almost about 30 degrees during the day and when you walk inside it's like nice 18 20 years inside it's so beautiful inside and uh, we also went to this other temple with this crazy avlokesh uh, avlokeshwara's uh, statue really really old school stuff man like this is like thousands of years back these are not even been retouched or yes. anything no i mean these were in good condition i yeah. guess that's why i learned there's like pieces of turquoise embedded in the foreheads of uh, guru rinpoche and avlokeshwara all his heads and uh, just generally man the vibe of this entire village this entire monastery because for me i was like this is always a passing town usually you know people are usually just driving straight to the more famous aryan valley which is right ahead but uh, if you're ever in le and uh, you want like a pure uh, countryside feel like a true countryside feel skurbachin is the village man it's got everything Good morning everybody. Uh we had an extremely tiring day last night, but uh, this morning we woke up to a beautiful sunrise out here in this really really gorgeous valley, very narrow valley, also very popularly known as uh, the Aryan Valley, uh home to the Brokpa tribe of people, you know. Uh so there are actually five villages with these people and we are in one of them called uh, Garkhon. So basically Tashi has spent a lot of time uh, doing his own personal projects in this village of Garkhon uh, which is basically just 10 kilometers before Batalek we're very close to the Indo-Pak border and uh, I don't really know what he has in store for us because uh, we've kind of handed ourselves 
over to him, you know. So let's see how this day goes. Class इधर हो रहा है आपका आप इधर ही पढ़ते हो सब कौन से क्लास में पढ़ते हो सब आप एट में बढ़िया सो दिस इज द स्कूल दिस इज वॉट योर इमेजिनेशन ऑफ अ पाठशाला गाँव पाठशाला इज अंडर अ ट्री स्टिंग इज वेरी नाइस आई विश वी हैड क्लासेज लाइक दिस बैक इन बॉम्बे वेन आई वॉज इन स्कूल नहीं नहीं कौन सा मतलब कौन सा सब्जेक्ट आपका फेवरेट सब्जेक्ट अच्छा इंग्लिश साइंस बड़े होके क्या करना है आपको साइंटिस्ट किस टाइप का साइंटिस्ट हाँ जो रॉकेट उड़ाते हैं अरे वाह नाइस ओके सो वी मेट अप विद बंच ऑफ लोकल बॉयज फ्रॉम गरखोन एंड दे टेकिंग अस टू अ वाटरफॉल यू नो वी लव वाटरफॉल्स एंड इट्स अ फ्रिकिन हॉट डे Did I mention how hot it is? I think I did mention. So check it out. Commercially, I do more of murals, you know, like canvases and portrait paintings. But uh, what I usually do is uh, I work on the folk songs of Ladakh. So I, it was in 2017 I started, uh, you know, like recording lots of like old songs, and then I interpret those like paintings, like those songs, into my own way, you know, like my painting. And in 2017 I came here and. Uh, this brokpa village called garkon and i came during the harvest festival which is known as bonuna festival so there you know like uh, i just stayed here for 15 days and i researched with their songs and among them uh, with this uh, two songs that i i have painted till now uh, one is called mantebomo so in mantebomo what they talk about is the beauty of mantebomo you know like the girl from mante you know how beautiful she was so but uh, There's a point in the song where they say if the Mante girl is not present in the like she is not in the party, the whole party gets dull. So I just imagine how beautiful she must have been, right? So that's why my painting is more like this girl is standing there, but then she's not looking in front. Of Everybody has this subjective beauty, like 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 perception of beauty in their own subjective manner. So I wanted to have that thing in that painting. Ki it's not looking at you but then you figure out how beautiful she must have been and the other song was you know like the hunting song which they talk about hunting like how many people used to go to this you know like valley so i thought like this was not a song they don't have a script the brokpa tribe doesn't have a script you know this was more like a you know like a passed down advice or like you know to the generation you know where the ladakhi were still at the time i guess hunter gatherers you know at the time kya karna hai kya nahi karna i guess you know like so that was whole thing like that you know so that's a very beautiful poem
So in Leh, we actually uh, through uh, Tashi and uh, Faisal, we met another guy, Rahul, who's also like a subscriber of ours. And uh, you know, immediately he was like, "Man, you guys need to come to Kargil district to my village, both Karpu." And uh, that's why we are over here. The hospitality has been just amazing, and uh, more than anything, man, walking. He took us for a walk like early this morning. Um, you know, collecting all the cows and all the demos, which are demo demos. Sorry, uh, which are the female yaks, um, you know, just up to the pastures, and we had an amazing, crazy, you know, uh, village experience, which is uh, really nice. And also the little boy, uh, uh, Dadul, right? Dadul. Yeah. Oh my God, he was also really, really entertaining. And this village is really, really beautiful. You know, I've seen villages all around um, Ladakh and Himachal regions. You know, and every village has something about it, right? But. There's something about both Karbu man. Like I fell in love immediately the moment I drove in. I don't want to romanticize it too much, but there's something about this place which which really really um, feels nice. So now Rahul's taking us up uh, to the Bodh Karbu uh, fort, the ruins of the fort. It may be like a 15-20 minute hike. Bodh Karbu village, jo hai, uh, jo do top hai hamare Shinagar uh, le highway mein. Ek hai Fotula, ek hai Namkila. Iske beech mein padta hai. To ye matlab tourist main attraction to nahi hai. Lekin abhi jab hum yahan pe jo jagah hai, ye fort hai Bodh Karbu ka. To ye jab uh, Dogra king jo the Jammu region ke. तो उन्होंने जब इनवेट किया था लद्दाख को तो इस साइड से आए थे तो यहां पे बिलीफ है कि यहां पे डिफेंड किया था लेह के राजा ने तो इसलिए आप ये देख सकते हैं जो ये पहाड़ी के ऊपर बिल्कुल स्टीप स्टीप में इन्होंने बनाया हुआ है तो यहां पे क्या होता था जब ऐसे ही कोई आता था इनवेटर आता था वहां से ऊपर से आर्चरी कुछ भी मतलब डिफेंड करना होता था मेन यहां पे मकसद जो था वन ऑफन लाइक प्रेज्यूम्स दैट बुद्धिज्म हैज रेन्ड सुप्रीम इन दीस पार्ट्स एज एन आउटसाइडर हु डज नॉट नो द हिस्ट्री ऑब्वियसली but uh, when you do bite your teeth in into the story of this place it is crazy <laughs> crazy a lot of wars <laughs> okay so this is the end of our last leg of our journey here in ladakh and uh, usually we take a lot of time you know to uh, see places but these past few days tashi rahul you know they were so excited to just see us and like they just wanted to show us every damn thing you know uh, but still we had an amazing amazing time visiting you know the lower sham valley the aryan valley and now a bit of the kargil district as well uh, which are much lower you know and much warmer as well so completely new for us this particular village uh, both karbu has been uh, i've kind of like really fallen in love with it mostly because it's got to do with this huge crazy mountain behind which looks exactly like the italian dolomites so i'm going to call this new i'm going to call this upper valley of both karbu uh, the dolomites of uh, ladakh anyways so uh, let's get into how we uh, went about choosing the music for this entire series and you know how music different kinds of music evoke uh, different kinds of emotions for different scenes okay so personally for us uh, music definitely takes like the front seat in our videos uh, mainly because our narratives are not so much information driven but they're more feeling driven you know and uh, music bed has been our one stop shop for sourcing all our music uh, for the past 2 years now you know and uh, we haven't repeated a single track So the whole interface is extremely user friendly and they have an extensive library of songs uh, spanning pretty much every genre under the sun. So once we get back from a shoot and we are reviewing our footage, we uh, like to, you know, think of different feelings and different emotions that we want you guys to feel as an audience through the different scenes. For instance, let's take the horse racing sequence uh, with the Tibetan nomads. Now, uh, the flavor I was going for was East Asian, obviously, uh, but the vibe on that day was, you know, very much like we were in a cowboy uh, movie. You know, so that's a pretty crazy combo to find. Uh, but uh, Music Bed's browse tools are so on point that all I had to do was select East Asian, and then I was the mood that I was looking for was tense because horse racing is a pretty tense situation. You know, and uh, just like that, I got like a whole bunch of songs to choose from. 
Now we can narrow our search even further and get like really, really technical. Uh, for example, beats per minute. How fast do you want your song to be? Uh, do you want your song to have like a crescendo, like a slow rise, or do you want it to just flatline, you know? Uh, do you want your song to be lyrical or instrumental? Pretty much every song has two versions, both the versions. Um, you know, for the more musically inclined, which key you want your song to be in, you know? Whether a C sharp or a B minor. And uh, let's say you have no technical knowledge about music at all. Uh, for you guys, you know, there are curated playlists according to different feelings and emotions that you can choose from, you know. And even then, if you're still not finding a song, you can just write to them or send them a reference track and they'll send you like a list of songs to choose from. So there you go. That's how we get record label quality music uh, for all our videos, uh, which you guys describe in the comment section as, you know, very Lord of the Rings, uh, Game of Thrones, very Discovery Channel and so on. Uh, so if you guys want to take your videos to the next level, make it sound more professional, sign up to musicbed.com using the link in the description. Uh, you can use the code Ronnie and Barty to get your first month off uh, when you sign up for the annual personal subscription. Trust us, this is money very well spent. I can't believe it's been over a month since we've been roaming around these parts. And uh, to be honest, every experience has been extremely enriching and rewarding. Uh, like Bhati says, you know, the mountain gods must truly be happy with us. The magnanimity of these mountains, you know, is surpassed only by the boundless hospitality of the Ladakhi people. Every area that we've been to, the experience of being there was made even more special thanks to old friends and new. And what was more amazing is how complete strangers opened up their homes, their families, their communities to us and made us feel so included and loved. Ladakh has always had that larger than life, overwhelming, almost mythical stature in our minds. And I won't be surprised if, even when we are 60, we're still out here discovering something new.